I trust you've had a good week. And uh, looking forward, don't forget now, next Sunday we'll have our uh, Christmas service. And uh, we'll be having a, a meal right afterwards. So hang around. You've got to eat somewhere. Uh, so you might as well hang around and eat. Amen. And uh, what we'll do, we'll do it a little different than what we normally do. But we'll go into the uh, service, uh, the fellowship hall, rather, with our meal. And then right after the meal, I think we're just going to sing a few Christmas carols. Maybe take a few testimonies. Amen. And uh, I want to give you just a small devotional about, about the Christmas and what it's about. Amen. Yeah, no Sunday school, by the way. And uh, so uh, if you're, uh, if you mark that off, amen. If you have your Bible, turn with me this morning to Mark chapter, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And uh, just uh, the Lord put this on my heart, and I think I want to share it with you. And I trust the Lord to speak to our hearts. And let me say to all those in social media, uh, we're praying for your Christmas. Many of us have needs. Uh, remember these. Uh, there's some that passed away in this time of year. I, I just heard that uh, the, the, the pastor there of uh, used to be of Ecclesia, his wife passed away. Was it last night? Last night. And uh, then also last night a former church member of mine passed away. And uh, so my phone rung last night also. And uh, so uh, this is a season. And we, uh, many people are, uh, some of them are unfortunate to not have their loved ones during this season. And so you pray for those. And uh, I'm, that makes me be grateful for who I do have, amen. Yeah. Those are my, my wife and children. And uh, family's about the Lord, the birth of our Lord. Excuse me, Christmas is about the birth of our Lord. Uh, but family's important, amen. If you've got a family member, man, and they love the Lord, they've been saved, and they're with you and I, we've got so much to be grateful for. All right, uh, Matthew chapter 8, we'll start our reading in verse uh, 1. And I want to just... Uh, by the Lord's will, develop a thought I think that will help you and I this morning. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. I want to preach to you this morning on the thought, the lesson from the leper. The lesson from the leper. Father, we love you today. Uh, we are grateful uh, for how you've blessed us throughout this week. Thank you for, Lord, allowing us to be here this morning. I'm grateful for those who've marked off their time this morning and uh, Lord, come in obedience to Hebrews 10, 25. Lord, uh, come to worship you in spirit and in truth. I'm not aware of all the needs of your people, but you are, Lord, and I pray, God, that you would meet their financial, their physical needs. Uh, Lord, we pray with the deaf angels past, and I pray, God, for these families who are facing a, a difficult time this Christmas, uh, having uh, lost a loved one, Lord. Although we know uh, these that we've mentioned are have received the Lord, and uh, Lord, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. And we know that they're with you, and we trust one day we'll see them. But still, uh, the absence of their uh, Lord presence here on this earth in this time uh, brings a sadness to our hearts. And I pray, God, that you'd help us. I pray now as we look into the Scriptures, Lord, you'd help us see some things. Uh, in the life of this leper, that's evident uh, that we need in our own personal lives. We just ask now that you would uh, speak to our hearts. I pray for each and every place where the Word of God is being faithfully preached. I pray for these men who are studied and labored. I pray for their people. And we just trust now that, uh, Lord, you'd speak to our hearts. We'll love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. This leper, I want to talk to you a little bit about him first. Many people, when we, when we think of leprosy, we forget uh, what the typology is in the Bible with leprosy. Now, type, leprosy is a picture of sin in the Old Testament. And uh, you know what? You don't have to be uh, too old to realize and to admit that all of us have a problem with sin. I didn't say all of y'all. I said all of us. Sin is a problem. And if we don't learn to deal with it the way God deals with sin... Uh, we're going we're gonna to end up having lived in this life, never receiving Christ, 
and die without Christ. And the Bible said there is a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. First, uh, First Peter chapter 2 talks about a place for people who die without Christ, who are in the midst of darkness, ever living in error, Peter said. And so uh, if you, what a wonderful time of the year to give your heart and life to Christ if you've never been saved. You know, a lot of folk, uh, they, uh, they, they're religious. I remember a, pre a preacher friend of mine, he preached a message, and I've never forgot the title. This was almost 30 years ago, Religious But Lost. In other words, going to church, going along in the motion of things, but never truly being saved, Brother Mark. I'm so glad, you know, this morning that I'm saved. Uh, you go back in your mind and I in mine and we'll realize uh, there was a time when I wasn't in church. I didn't want anything to do with God. Uh, better, matter of fact, I longed for the uh, NFL ball game. That was the highlight of my day on a Sunday. And I'm so grateful, Brother Ephraim, that, that God has saved me from that. Amen. He's cleansed me with his blood and birthed me into the family of God. This leper comes out and he is uh, filled with leprosy. And if God doesn't change his life, he's going to die with his leprosy. And I want to notice something here about this leper uh, who, me personally, is a type of a sinner. This man has never been saved until today, until we read in our scriptures. But there's something in his life that a lot of people don't have. You know, there's something in the lives of lost people that many Christians need. I'm going to point that out here. Uh, the leopard comes out, and when he does, he, he illustrates something. He gives us evidence of something that's in his life before Christ ever touches his life. And notice, if, if you would, in verse uh, 2 there, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Now look, this man is lost without God. He's never been saved. His life is filled with leprosy. Now uh, I understand his need of being touched by God has motivated his uh, longing for Christ to change his life. I totally understand that. His is more of a physical situation than a spiritual one. But I'll tell you one thing, if you die physically and you die without getting right spiritually, the difference is this, physically is temporal, this world is temporal, but spiritually is eternal. It's forever and ever and ever. And uh, you don't want to die without Christ, friend. Let me, let, me, let me highlight that. You do not want to die without having received the Lord Jesus and being changed by his marvelous gospel. How he saved you and I. But the leper comes out here. And the Bible says that this leper friend. Worshiped the Lord. And I want you to see what I want to call. Refer to as the evidence of reverence. Did you know what this leper did? He come out and before Christ ever touched him. He fell on his face and said Lord. If thou wilt thou canst make me clean. And what he did is this, he gave Christ the position in his life that the Lord deserved. And he evidenced reverence, friend, in his life before he's ever saved. Now the Lord touches him and cleanses him. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are we evidencing reverence in our lives that we are God's? People, can people look at my life and yours and see that we love the Lord without a doubt in, our, in their mind? They know there goes a Christian. Would you be, if you were on trial this morning, uh, being convicted for being a child of God, would there be enough evidence, friend, to convict you and I of being blood-bought, born-again Christians, listen, oh preacher, you don't have to worry about that. The scripture says uh, God looks on the heart, uh, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. God knows that I'm a Christian, God knows that I'm saved. Well look, that's true, but we're not talking about the Lord this morning as far as evidencing 
uh, reverence. We evidence reverence for not only God in submission to Him, but we're living in a world that is filled with lost, dying people who are filled with leprosy, who are looking for someone to help them make the right decision, friend. Here's a leper, and I want you to notice, friend, he is evidencing reverence in his life before he's ever saved. Now, I'll ask you this, friend. You remember, you remember the song, you, going back to those songs y'all were, y'all were playing on the piano. I remember the day the Lord saved me. Amen. You remember that day? Yes. I want you to just think about it for a minute. Matter of fact, that day I had taken off and I was, uh, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was up in a, in a top bedroom in just a little apartment. We didn't have nothing. We didn't have nothing, friend. And that's that be the truth. If, if God would have never saved my wife and I, friend, there's no doubt in my mind. I would either already have been dead or in the penitentiary, one of the two. We had nothing. And if it wasn't for my, my in-laws and my mom, I don't know how many days we would have been in desperate need, friend. Lost without God. No kind of wisdom, no kind of help about maintaining a job and taking care of my family. I did, but I was lost, friend. Leprosy had hold of me, amen, spiritual leprosy. I was up in that apartment, and I'm telling you, friend, by myself, you do not have to get saved in church, friend. You don't have to get saved in church. Now, that's church a good place to be saved. Uh, But I was alone in that apartment. I thought I was alone. And I didn't even realize, Brother Ephraim, God had been working on me. He had been working on me a long time ago. The Bible had been taking root in my life. And I didn't even, I didn't even realize it, Jason. Uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God works on people sometimes we're not even aware of. And the Lord was working on me. And, you know, we wonder why people's lives are not changed. And here's why. Here's why. They, some people hear the word of God, they come into church, they don't never make a change, they never get committed to the Lord. Listen to me, they never show evidence of reverence. They never show evidence of reverence, and we wonder why. Well, here's why I believe they've never been saved. Hey, when God passes your way in mind, and he literally changes your life. You'll never get over it, friend. You'll never get over it. I was up in that room. I can tell you right where it is. How many of you know where Red Bank is? You know where Memorial Drive is? Runs in, runs right by the, uh, the duck pond and the, uh, the graveyard there. There was some apartments right there. And uh, I remember going home. It might have been a Wednesday night. Uh, I I drug in there lost on a Wednesday night, believe it or not. Most Christians come on Wednesday night, but I drug in there lost. That was free commercial. (laughs) Went in there and was in that room. And I'm telling you, brother, for the first time in my life, God showed me where I was without him, Brother Greg. I mean, lost without the Lord. God began, Chuck, to magnify the wrong that I had done in my life. And I realized for the first time in my life what I had done by leading my life and and me running my life. I fell on my face and I said, Dear God in heaven, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and life and save me and help me to regain my family. And God saved me. Friend, he saved me that day. Well, look, that day when I got saved, I'm telling you, friend, there was reverence in my heart. I mean, I got up and God was to me like he had never been before. I'm telling you, I had had a relationship with the Lord. I had taken his name publicly, uh, as used it as a curse word. I, I had, uh, you know, I, I would never deny God, you know. I'd always, somebody won't talk about God, I'd listen a little bit. I'd never talk bad about God. But there had never been a real transformation. When a man gets saved or a woman gets saved, listen to this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You do not get saved and stay in the same filth that you've been in. It's impossible. No way. 
Hey, after I got saved, I can remember Brother Jack Cole. I, I, I was tore up one day. I called him. I'd go in. I, a young, I hadn't been saved awful long, and I'd get an opportunity to preach, and I'd go in to preach, Greg, and I'd smoke. I did. Smoking, by the way, is one of the hardest things you'll ever do to quit. So don't be tough on somebody that smokes. My mama smoked. I love my mama. She never put them down. She's in the grave right now. You can go over here at Hicks and her body's over in the grave because of cigarettes. I'm just telling you the truth now. But you know what, Vicky? I can remember. I hadn't been saved long and I scheduled to preach. Garrick and I went into my room and I lit up a cigarette. I said, God, I enjoy this. I don't want to put this down. But after the Lord saved me, you know what he did? When God saved me, he took my filthy mouth, Brother Chuck. I mean instantly. You can ask my wife. I don't believe after I got saved, I cursed. One time if I did, I don't remember. God took that filth out of my life. He took narcotics out of my life, drugs. He took gambling. I was a compulsive gambler, Brother Mark, a compulsive gambler. But I sit there and... and, and uh, Brother Cole, I was struggling with his cigarette stuff. And I said, Brother Jack, I said, I just, he said, son, he said, you're letting a little four-inch thing rule your life? He said, really? He said, surely, Brother Chris, listen, listen, never forgot it. Surely, Brother Chris, you love God enough to give something up for him. And he quoted this verse. What? Know you not? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You should not defile it. And you know what I did? I told God when I was smoking, Brother Paul, I said, Lord, I don't want to put these things down. Nothing I love more than a, a marble, red marble. Don't want no lights. If I didn't have a marble, I'd take a pale mail or something, something strong. Amen. <laughs> and I drunk me some black coffee. Oh, I still bring the black coffee now. And I said, God, you've done so much for me in reverence to your word. I'm going to put this down and never touch it again. God came me with a lightning bolt, Brother Mark. I never had another one. Right. Now, look, that's a hard. It was hard. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. But I've done it for him. You know why? God had done so much for me, Brother Greg. Amen. Now watch this. There's evidence of worship here in, this, in this, this leopard's life. In the book of Mark and the book of Luke, you don't have to turn there. But the Bible says that this leper fell down prostrate forward. He fell down and got as low as he could. And he said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. The only way to illustrate it is this. The word worship there carries the meaning of when a dog will lick the master's hand. If you ever had a little animal come up and just lick your hand, he knows who's in control. He, he's not going to buck them. He's not going to bite them. He knows who's in control. And there is total submission in that animal to that human. That's the meaning here. This leper, friend, when he come in Christ's presence, he, he illustrated evidence of being in total submission and evidence reverence. Here's what I'm missing in the church today. Reverence for God. We don't do what we do, sing what we sing, worship the way we worship because we're trying to impress other people or we don't want the preacher mad and the Sunday school teacher howling us. We live the way we live and do what we're supposed to do in reverence to Almighty God, friend. Now the Lord said this. I mean, the, the leper said this. He said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. There's the evidence of the leper and then there's something that he teaches us that's essential for you and I. And that is this. Reverence is essential. You don't look, you don't get something from God and God bless you and you not do what God's demanding. God demands that we honor and reverence Him. It's not a suggestion. God's not asking you and I to honor Him with our lives. He's not saying, hey, if it gets around 
I'd like for you to live for me today. That's not what the Lord is saying, no. Hey, if you think about it and you wake up today and it's within your uh, capability, will you read your Bible? Will you live for me? Will you be faithful? No, God demands that you and I live in a life of submission to him. And, and today, friend, we've got the mentality of this. we got everybody. There's not a person in this building who does not need the blessing of Almighty God on their life. I do and you do. And the, the message here to the leper is this. Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. His attitude is this. God, I know you can change my life. I know you can do what I need only if you will. But look, the, rever the, 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 the leopard had already displayed reverence and worship to the Lord Jesus. He was already in submission. That's why Christ touched him. It's not a one-way deal with God blessing and you and I not honoring the Lord. Let me give it to you. James chapter 1, you ready? How many of you like it when God answers your prayer? How many of you ever... Let me just give you this. How many of you have ever really had a genuine need? I mean, you needed God to do something in your life and in mine. Nobody else could do it. And the Lord so hemmed it up and he made it this way to where when, he, when you prayed, God answered that prayer and you knew no one else could have done this but God. How many of you have ever had that situation before? I've had that before. Now, how many of you did? When you need God to meet a need or you need God to bless us, we pray, how many of us expect God to answer? Amen. I do. I, I pray, I expect God to answer. Let me help you here. That's a two-way street. James says this, And be not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. We're expecting God to, 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 to answer our prayers, to bless us, to meet our financial needs, to take care of our physical needs. Well, God, on the other hand, expects you and I to reverence Him with our lives and to honor Him with our lives and to live for Him. Amen? It's a two-way street. It's not God bless, 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 and I'll get around to doing something for you. You know what? I don't know where or what happened between the generation. Now, you can get mad at me this morning if you want, but it seems like around from 45 down to about 19, we got issues. I'm just being honest. Friend, I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, you're in holy ground this morning. God died for you and I. He shed, his son shed his holy blood. We refer to him as Emmanuel. And God demands and respects and expects reverence from my life to him. Matter of fact, don't call me reverend, okay? That title only belongs to the Lord. You can disagree with me if you like, that's fine. But that title goes to the Lord. We're to reverence God. We're to honor God. We're to, uh, we're to live for the Lord. And I want to ask you this morning, this morning, is there any evidence in my life and yours that we love Him? That we really love Him? Well, the Lord here, He sees the evidence in this man's life. Now watch this. And the leopard comes to Him. He said, Lord, if Thou wilt, Thou canst make me clean. And this man falls on his face and he worships the Lord. Now look, there are times in the life of the Apostle Paul and the life of Peter, uh, if you'll remember, Peter, had, God had used him to do some mighty things and Cornelius comes and I believe it's Acts, uh, Acts 10, Cornelius comes and he starts to do reverence to Peter and starts to worship the P Peter and Peter stops him and refuses worship, says, no, 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 no. Paul does the same thing. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, you see the same issue with the angels saying, you're not worshiping me. You're not reverencing me. And so many times through the scripture, we see where reverence and worship is refused to man. We ought not put a pastor on a, listen, we ought not put a pastor on a pedestal. We ought to put him on a prayer list, amen. But anyway, uh, reverence is only for the Lord Jesus. Now, here's a place 
where Christ does not refuse the worship. I wish the Roman Catholic Church would read this text. He accepts worship here from this leper. And you know what? The, the, the Lord touches him. Let me ask you this. How important it is to you and I this year, especially Christmas coming around, really showing reverence to the Lord. How, is, is my life, does my life, would, would, would it bring conviction to others who are not living for the Lord? Hey, we're, 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 hey time is passing so quickly. My phone rang last night. And uh, just, hey, we are so blessed. If you're here this morning and you have your physical health and you have your family, Friend, I'm telling you right now, you've got enough to thank God for, especially with all this COVID stuff and everything going on. Amen. I had a, a, a young lady last night. I would say she's probably, she may be in her mid-20s. She called me preacher. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I, this is, she gave me her name, and she said, uh, I was looking through my dad's phone, and your name was in his phone. I know how close y'all was. 62. 62. Died from major, died from major anxiety from COVID. 62 years old. Life is running by so fast. I mean... It's almost like Niagara Falls. You trying to grab the water and pull it back over the fall. Life is running by so fast. It ain't going to be long and them babies are going to be 20. Remember what I told you? They're going to be 20. And Here's what I want to ask you. How much reverence are we giving to the Lord? How much are we giving to God in worship? And I, I'm not talking about the church. I'm not talking about giving to the church financially or physically. I'm talking about are you in love with the Savior, friend? Is he the apple of your eye? Is he your bride and morning star? Is he the lily of your valley? Does he mean more to you than anybody else? Matter of fact, that little dog, when he comes up and he licks that master's hands, he knows exactly two things. Number one, the love that that master has for that animal and the security that that animal has. I want to ask you something this morning. I'm going to obey the Lord. I want you to stand to your feet. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to give an invitation. How long has it been since you know without a shadow of a doubt God has spoke to your heart? How long has it been since you've been in his presence? You fell in a prostrate position and there has been adoration, reverence, homage, honor from your heart to the God of heaven. And God saved you. You say, preacher, I don't... If you're here this morning, you're not saved, you need to be saved. But if you're here and you're saved, God saved you from that filth of lifestyle that we were living. God's changed your life. He's blessed you with a family. He's blessed you with a job. He's blessed you with all these things. And I'm telling you, it's a two-way street. Don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers. When is the last time in adoration and some reverence You've got along with him. I didn't say come for the altar call or come for the preacher, but you've come down, you've got somewhere here, and you've got a hold of Almighty God, and you got in the position of submission and reverence and said, Lord, I'm coming entirely because I love you. I want my life in line with you. I want to, look, Lord, I want to show much evidence of reverence given to the Lord Jesus. And this morning you need to come. Some are already moving. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Brother Marty, pick us something up there if you would. And as they come, maybe you need to come. Would you do that? Would you do that? Every time I'm Two down here. A flower, Christmas is coming up. You've got your mate this year. You've got your children, your family, your wife, your children. 
COVID hadn't touched your life like it has others. Every time I God's paid your bills. The sunrise, He's met your needs. How long has it been, friend, Hear the song that you've the come and you've given homage and reverence to the Lord of heaven and you said, God, today I want you to know that I want to be lined up with you and I want to love you. And I want to instill in my life some major reverence. God bless your heart, friend. You come on. You come on, people are moving. Nature Don't wait on no one else. You come on. Itself, come on publicly and bow. That reminds Say, Lord, me I heard that you. The God I serve is good. I'm reminded God is good. Let me ask you this one. Even though Maybe you'd say, I preacher, fail the thing no doubt in my mind, I'm a Christian. I do not feel inclined to come this morning, I'm reminded but in submission to the Lord and in reverence to Him, when he hears I love Him with all my heart and by an uplifted hand. I want Him to know that publicly this morning. God bless your heart. I like see your hands. Mine goes right up with yours. We never want you to move the altar if God doesn't move you. But while these are praying, there's still time. Maybe let me turn the page here. Maybe there's someone here you've never been delivered out of your field, friend. You've never come out of your field. Ever living in error. Still doing the same things you've done when you was lost. Still running with the same people that you was running with when you was lost. Never changed. Never done right. Never gotten out of the field. And today you need to be saved. Are you here? Is that you? Every time I'm blessed to feel the warm embrace of those I love and hear them tell me that they love me, my heart is thrilled. Oh, yeah. Yet I'm reminded of a greater love extended from my God above when he sent his son to die on Calvary's hill. Oh, the precious blood that Jesus shed that day. The Bible says the this leopard fell in Luke on his face. Jesus did what no mortal when he man did, you know what the Lord did? He reached out his hand. And he said, I will be thou laid whole. And he saved him and loved him and helped him. And I'm telling you, friend. I love the season I'm coming up. God is good. I love the family that we're going to gather around. Even you can call me what I you want. I like a beautiful Christmas tree. I don't like it in the church, but I like it in my house. I like the food and the festivities. All those are wonderful. It's about the Lord. Amen. This Christmas is about our Lord. Making much of Him. Giving much to him, giving our lives to him. As he fades that out, we're going to close with a question just real quick. Just fade her out there, Brother Marty. Just before we close, it's so good to be in the house of God. and I, will, I hope you have a wonderful day today. And just to be in the presence of people who love the Lord and been saved is a, is a blessing to me. But uh, maybe, maybe, just maybe, God's done something in your life this morning before we dismiss. And I've, I've deliberately cut it off to give you just a, t a minute or two. But maybe God's done something for you. And you're busting. And you, you say, I, I show sure like to. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Maybe we're fixing to swap over in the year. Christmas is coming. New Year's is coming. And I want to give you an opportunity God's done something for you this year, friend. He's done something, and you want to you you make it known, and you want to praise his name publicly. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody real quick. Yes, ma'am. I felt that I got COVID, and I prayed for him, and God healed me. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Someone else real quick before we dismiss? Anybody? Yes, sir. Anyone else, real quick? Anybody else? All right, we're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. 
Don't forget next Sunday, please be here. Mark it off. You don't have nowhere. I'm going to smoke a ham, and if y'all ain't here to eat it, I'm going to end up taking it all home with me, okay? And that ain't good. You'll run my blood pressure up. <laughs> so be here. Mark it off. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure we, we're sanitized. Everything will be clean, and, and it'll be done decently and in order. Amen. And uh, we'll have a service right after. Just like this morning, we'd be dismissing to the fellowship hall. We'll eat and go home. So uh, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to say there's a sign-up sheet out in the lobby, and if people can put down what they're going to bring so that we know what we need to fill in. Amen. Um, and Thank also you. if you can bring in a two-minute service so we're not tied up during the service. Amen. Thank you. If you didn't hear, uh, if you're going to bring something, bring something, okay? Amen. Bring Thank something. You. We need it. <laughs> but uh, we'll have a ham, and uh, but sign up where everybody don't bring biscuits, okay? Uh, I like beans. Don't you like beans, Brother Edwin? Beans or sweet potatoes or something. I'm trying to help these people. Uh, casseroles, uh, squash casserole. I mean, we can keep going, but uh, bring something, amen? And uh, we'll have some sweets. I can't have those, but we'll have some. And uh, just mark something off out there. And look, now, if there's something and you can't bring something, you come on anyhow, okay? Because I know sometimes people have been in a situation where they can't bring nothing. We want you to come anyhow, amen? Just write that a little list out there, fill it in, what you're going to bring, and we'll know what we're going to do, okay? Amen. Anyone else before we dismiss? All right. If there's no others, uh, Brother Marty, why don't you dismiss us, if you would, please? Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the opportunity that we have to come and worship you. Lord, I pray that this message that we heard this morning about the leper, um, having you cleanse him of his leprosy, Lord, that if there be anybody here that has um, spiritual leprosy in their heart and in their body, Lord, that you'll cleanse them and they'll ask you and worship you to um, cleanse them of that leprosy and that sin that they have in their life, Lord. And if there be anybody here that is not saved, that they'll come to know you as their own personal Savior, Lord. And we pray that you'll, um, you'll bless the um, service coming up next week um, for our Christmas service, Lord, that we'll have many in attendance here to hear your word and, and to fellowship with us. And, um, yes. Also, um, uh, give us a safe trip home or to whatever we'll be doing this afternoon and bring us back tonight at 445 for prayer and then our service this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.